Hey everyone, welcome to the Legal Soft Podcast. My name is Shayan Alahi. I'm here with our guest today, Daniel Warner from Law Push. We got Daniel Warner here, the wizard and mastermind behind Law Push, which is a lead generation service. Correct. How did you get into that? Went in, I said, I'll do whatever you guys need me to do. And then I kind of just fell into this. We started off in partnerships. And then I just kind of got addicted to sending as many emails as I could to attorneys, which was probably pretty annoying. And we ended up closing some, I ended up sending something like 10,000 emails over like 20 days or something. And we ended up signing up like 10 clients, 15 clients or something off of that. And then from there, I was just stuck and figuring out how I could generate more demos, more sales. And then we kind of got into lead gen internally for LegalSoft. Um, did that for about a year, passed it off, automated a ton of things. And then now we started Law Push earlier this year to do the exact same thing for the lawyers now. So it'll be less annoying for the lawyers and more so annoying probably for the consumers that are getting all of our emails and seeing all of our ads and all of that. But the good thing is it works and it's been working probably almost a year now. And that's where that's how we got here. So yeah, what is Law Push? Law Push is a lead generation agency for lawyers exclusively. So we originally started earlier this year, but we were offering the service through LegalSoft originally, but it was more so just for one-off clients. And now we've kind of branched it off into its own brand. And now we're offering it and actually going to market exclusively to lawyers for lead generation services. And can you expand on that? What exactly does lead generation services entail? It's really, it's really a wide, it's a wide variety of things, but in our case, it's paid lead generation and that's through advertising across several different channels. Um, mainly Facebook, Instagram has been historically our main channel, but we're pushing very hard toward YouTube specifically now. Um, Yelp, we just partnered with Yelp and then it also includes Google search and then Google local services. And can you just give us a breakdown as the difference between these? Like what, as a business owner or, or lawyer, what would be my incentive to use one platform over, over the other? Um, is it case by case? Is it by practice type? What's your approach there? Yeah, I think you could break it down by practice type, but I think a better way to do it is more so figure out what the firm's goal is and what your ultimate goal is. Um, Google people and Google and Yelp specifically, people are actively searching for a lawyer. Now those leads might cost more to acquire, but they're going to typically be a higher volume, or excuse me, a higher value. Um, your cost per acquisition could go up a little bit with Google, but it's those better high value cases, people actively looking for a lawyer. Whereas Facebook, other on the other hand, you're kind of placing an ad in front of them and almost, I don't want to say hoping that they have a case, but you're going to get a lot more leads for a cheaper cost. You're just going to have to bob and weave and have the intake set up to actually maneuver it interesting so i guess essentially one of them is kind of like a push strategy where you're just putting it out there and hoping that people see it and the other is a pull where you're actually pulling from people who are searching for this or actively have made it known that they're interested in these services exactly and when it comes to practice areas specifically like estate planning or immigration where it's a flat fee or there's hourly rate for the attorney google i think a lot of attorneys are going to have a better time because they're typically the leads are more they're more ready to buy whereas the facebook leads are kind of more so looking for advice and it's better for building the brand and building audiences and then retargeting based on engagement so i think having a very solid page with a ton of video content specifically recorded by the attorney or somebody from the firm and then utilizing that to build audiences and then retarget people based on engagement because the only people that are going to engage with a two minute long immigration video or people that are trying to immigrate. So that's kind of the approach for meta. Interesting. And what's the process like? Like if I'm a law firm and I sign up with you from the first day you meet me and start the onboarding process, what does that process look like? Yeah, it's, it's honestly, it doesn't look like a whole lot on the attorney's end because we basically handle everything. So we're putting together all the creatives, we're editing everything. We're taking over the ad account. We're doing it all. Basically, all we need is a credit card to put on the account and then tell us where to send the lead. And then how long is that process when you say you're coming up with creative and basically building out the uh, account 
or excuse me, the ad account from scratch, mm -hmm. you're going off very little data. You're it's a blank slate, right? Yeah. How do you ensure that the client's budget is mo most optimized? Um, and you know, is there AB testing? What's that process like? Yeah, we, in the early stages of this, we did a lot, we're always testing, but we did a lot more kind of high level testing in the early stages of this. And we put a lot of ad spend behind it to kind of figure it out. But at this point we have it, I don't want to say templated, but we have the blueprints laid out per state and per practice area per platform. So we'll know if we're going to personal injury in Texas, we'll have that laid out and ready to go. So it doesn't start with a whole lot of split testing, but we are testing different creatives specifically on meta based on the video content that is being produced on the law firm's end. So that's where the real testing is occurring, the graphics and the static stuff and the keywords and the targeting and all of that. We pretty much have that down on our end already. Cool. Um, and then, so from a law firm's perspective, what are, what are their expectations? Is this something that I have to commit to for six months, 12 months, three months? And from a budget standpoint, what am I looking to allocate? Yeah, that's the first thing we talk about on, on calls or the first thing I really bring up on calls with potential clients is budget. And well, first we explain how it all works, but we'll go into the budget. And then from there is when we'll decide on where we're actually going to start in terms of platform. So we'll push, if it's a lower budget, I would say, you know, go straight for something like LSAs and try to get the most bang for your buck. If the cost per call is there, for example, but if we're going to, you know, if we're talking, we have a $50,000, $200,000 budget, then I would say, look, let's start, let's get YouTube ads going. Let's get Google ads going. Let's try to diversify and not put all the eggs in one basket. So it just, it really depends on the practice area and the state on where to start and the budget. And then what's that timeline like once you get started? How soon can I get results? How soon will this be optimized? Yeah. Yeah. As far as, as far as timeline goes, I would say, you know, it depends on the practice area and state again, just because it has to do with the market, but we have a lot of it down. So if we're going to start with meta, let's just say you could expect, I would say decent results the first month. Second month is where it'll start to pick up. And then the third month is when you'll start to love me. <laughs> Before the, the first month is always a little bit rough. Now, if we're talking about Google, for example, Google search, it's going to take a bigger investment. It's going to take more time to start actually generating that return. But I think it's well worth it if A, you're trying to diversify and B, you have the budget to do it. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, and then what are the benefits of each platform? Like I know, for example, with LSA, they will reimburse you for unqualified leads. Um, is that the main selling point there? What's the biggest value proposition of each one of these platforms? And what is the reason for utilizing that? Yeah. LSA to me, every attorney should have up. I think it's just a complete no brainer. Google local service ads. Um, it's you're only going to pay per call and you'll get reimbursed per call that isn't calling in about your specific case types that you're looking for. So if I go into my LSA profile and I check off, I'm an immigration attorney, I only want family-based, employment-based, and asylum cases, we could check those off and we'll pay per call you know, for those types of calls, but we're not going to be paying if somebody calls in about a personal injury case or something random. Um, that's that's the pro of LSA. What separates you apart from other competitors or programs like Zoom Info? I think working with data companies mixed with lead gen is actually a really good idea. So there's companies like Zoom Info and then there's companies like Warmly, for example, where they basically, you're essentially purchasing a line of code, a script or a few lines of code, pasting it onto your website or your landing pages and collecting all of the traffic that visits that visits those specific pages. So you're essentially pulling everybody, even if they don't submit a lead form or actually call in, it still gives you the opportunity to send them emails, send them texts, have the intake team reach out and see if they have a case or not. So companies like Zoom Info and all these other data companies and these AI companies where they could just pull data off of websites just by visitors are great to work with along with lead gen because then you're just pushing traffic to those websites through the paid ads. And then you can almost just start your funnel there. Okay. Um, and then what is a case study that you have for us of a successful turnaround for a client? Yeah. Um, 
a good one I would say is an employment client we're working with in LA. Um, originally we started, we said, okay, let's just start in LA and start small. They didn't have much budget. They're fresh out of, out of law school. And, you know, we had maybe a couple thousand dollars to play with. And I said, okay, look, let's just, let's start small. Let's go after LA and then expand from there. Um, we started with them back in February and if whoever's watching, this is, um, it's November now and they've, I think, yeah, they're spending closer to 15,000 a month. Now they started with two and then they're signing up employment cases, pre-lit cases, singles and doubles, uh, for around three, $400 each. So that's, that's one of our best accounts in terms of, um, cost per acquisition, but we're also, we're spending probably two, $300,000 a month on lemon law now. We're generating those cases for around a thousand dollars in California, two fifty, three hundred outside of California. So those are kind of our two, our two biggest wins, I would say, so far. Okay, so the LA law firm that focuses on employment, you're saying it's a three to four hundred dollar cost per lead, cost per acquisition, cost. Per- oh wow. Okay. So what is the return on that for the client? Yeah, it's it's tough. It's tough to project, and I think actually. I don't know, maybe legally I wouldn't be able to see the exact amount that each person that signed up from our ads. Is it like a 10X, 20X, 50X? Yeah, I, 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 I would figure that they're making at least five or 10 grand on each of those cases and they're signing up around 50 a month now. Okay, so that's a 10X plus. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was for sure a big win. And then we're doing the same, I think, around with, with Lemon now too. We're spending... Call it two fifty a month, two hundred fifty thousand a month, and then, yeah, they're signing. I think probably cases. They're signing up cases around a thousand per month, so that's about two hundred fifty cases a month they're getting. Wow. Um, couple more questions for you here. Uh, what sets you apart from other companies? I think our resources and our industry knowledge. So, I've been involved in paid media. I know we launched only this year. But I've been involved with paid media in the legal industry now, probably closer closer to three years, two and a half years. And then we have a great support team here with Hamid, yourself, the marketing team just in general. So we just have a lot of great minds pooled into the same room. And I think that gives us a huge advantage over everybody else. The years of experience and then just the like-minded motivation and kind of just the grind that everybody's on to get the best results. And I'm not too familiar with the industry, but is it standard practice to niche down and focus on legal? Or is that something that also sets you apart that you do only focus on legal? I I would say it is standard practice until the agency becomes too big for that niche. So uh, it's called an SMMA. It's a social media marketing agency. That's originally how we started. We're branching out to Google and all these other things now. But they'll typically niche down. So there's some good ones. I've heard of dental is really good. and in, in by good, I mean lucrative, um, dental, Cairo. I even heard mobile pet groomer, Legion. <laughs> There's a bunch of different little niches and you kind of just pick and choose. But with the virtual staffing, it goes, it just works so well with LegalSoft to where they place the intake staff into the law firm. And then we're generating the leads that are sent to that intake team. And then we almost have full control over them because we're so closely tied that we can really optimize that conversion rate from lead to case. So we get super, super hands-on with the actual leads and not just generate them and dump them off and say, good luck to you. It's more so let's generate these leads. I don't care what a, about a lead. I care about a case and the client only cares about a case. So I could send a client 10,000 leads a month and they sign up one and they hate me, or we could send them 10 leads a month. They sign up 10 and I'm their best friend. So it's kind of, that relationship i think gives us a huge advantage interesting um so yeah before a uh, firm starts any sort of ad spend what is kind of like a checklist that you have for them in order to ensure that this ad spend is going to be optimized or as efficient as possible yeah good question i would say that the first thing before committing to ad spend and committing to lead generation is building out a proper intake team so if the attorney is answering the phone you can kiss good results goodbye it's already over with you can pack up and leave if you have a proper intake structure and you work with companies like LegalSoft and you can build out, you can hire a virtual assistant, $2,000 a month. It's the best investment you'll ever make. Place them at the front line. 
and let the lead form submissions and let the inbound calls go straight to the intakers. Make them make sure they're friendly, train them yourself. Legal soft training is incredible, but it always takes a touch from the attorney as well. Train them, send the leads to them, let them screen them. And then as soon as they're screened, either push them to a consultation with the attorney or just sign them up right there. So that system there is number one most important thing. And then I would say on top of that is having some sort of automated outreach to the leads uh, as soon as they're submitted. So lead form submitted, send a text, and then enroll them in a drip sequence if they don't respond the next day. It's a great answer. Um, yeah, just kind of wrapping this up. Are there any other services that you feel parlay off of this? Like, is it beneficial for me to do SEO and ad spend at the same time? Is it beneficial? Obviously, if I'm doing Google to optimize my Google business profile before doing any of this, if I'm doing meta, be active on social media, how much does that play into effect or does it at all? Huge. It The whole, you kind of could, you could take two approaches to it. You can take the performance marketing approach and try to maximize whichever source is generating the best results. Or you could take an actual marketing approach to it and diversify and loop everything into each other and create things like cross-platform retargeting and all of that. So, for example, Meta could actually help your SEO, which I feel like a lot of people underlook. So you could run, for example, a traffic campaign to a page on your website, like a blog, for example, and start building an audience. So if you're a personal injury lawyer pushing traffic to a page of your website that says what to do in case of an accident. The only people reading that entire thing, again, are people that were injured in an accident. So you're pushing a ton of traffic, thousands of people per month to that blog on your website, and it's just going to start helping SEO. And then you have a review automation at the same time to generate reviews, which will help your SEO, your credibility. And then at the same time, you work with Legal Soft to work on SEO, and you're just doing all of this all at the same time. You're building audiences from people clicking on your Google search ads. They searched personal injury lawyer. They clicked on your ad. They left. But now I'm going to retarget them on Meta for another chance. So you could loop it all together. And I think that's better if you're willing to invest into it long term and you have the budget to accomplish it. Interesting. How do law firms find you? Lawpush.com, at Lawpush on Instagram, at Lawpush on Facebook. Uh, email me daniel at lawpush.com hello at lawpush.com either one well mr warner i just want to say i appreciate your time i know it's been a crazy busy day and you made a lot of time for this podcast today so thank you for being on today and you guys are watching the legal soft podcast please like please subscribe leave us five stars new episodes every tuesday and friday <laughs>